Hello Simmers and welcome to Munich International Airport, the fabulous scenery by short final design. Absolutely wonderful scenery and we are parked here with the uh, also magnificent FlyJ Sim 737-200. An old airplane and that is an indication of what we are going to do with this flight, namely some old school navigation using the uh, inertial navigation system, which is the uh, plugin uh, provided by SIFA. And we will use that uh, plugin to uh, navigate ourselves from Munich in southern Germany to Ljubljana, which is the capital of Slovenia, south of Austria. And basically our flight consists of a sit, a direct to and a star. And I already uh, set up the airplane, did all the tests, uh, the weight and balance, everything is set. Let me just switch on the window heats already. And all we have to do now is program the uh, SIVA, the inertial navigation system. Like I said, um, inertial navigation, a plug-in by SIVA. You can buy this one at the uh, store.xplane.org. It will cost you, uh, I thought it was $10. And what you get is this system. Um, the plugin needs to be installed into the aircraft plugins folder, so do not install it in resources plugins, but go to the specific airplane that you want to use it in. And in the airplane folder, go to the plugins folder. And once you have done that, you can select it. Um, I use it in both the uh, FlyJ Sim uh, 727 and the 737-200. And with FlyJ Sim, if you move your cursor to the left, you get this menu. And with the uh, settings menu, you can choose the NAV system that you like, flight management system, no NAV option, or the SIFA INS, if you bought the plugin. Well, if you buy it, this is what you get. Um, and this is basically the pre-GPS uh, era uh, method of navigation. Basically, it's an in-between between the the, the real hardcore VOR to VOR navigation using only radio navigation to uh, find your way around the planet and the GPS era of course that we have nowadays uh, the uh, inertial navigation system uh, was the in-between now what do we have here we have uh, a uh, keypad where we can enter the uh, the numbers that we need we have a main switch of standby align and nav there are two lights, uh, ready and a battery light. The unit is equipped with its own battery, but I once heard, I'm not really sure where it was, uh, that the uh, battery of this system would actually drain itself quite rapidly. So it's uh, to be recommended to start your, um, to give your airplane an electric supply. So either start the APU or put it on ground power. We are on ground power right now and have the uh, unit uh, fed its electricity through that. Um, the ready, this is a light that will illuminate as soon as the uh, unit is aligned and ready to, uh, you are basically cleared to go. Now the first thing that we have to do um, is switch this one to standby. And that will bring some life to the displays. Now in here you have the north or south and west and east uh, coordinates there are some buttons in here this is a selector for the various waypoints you can enter 10 coordinates but the first one at zero always has to be your present position for uh, the alignment of this uh, unit just as in uh, a modern uh, flight management computer or control display unit you first have to align the, uh, the system before you can uh, actually find your way around the globe and here we have a selector for different options now if I move this one first to desired track um, we see a change in the display in here it says 0 9 5 this is 9 and 5 not 95 it's two separate numbers 0 indicates that there are no malfunctions in the system 9 is the current mode of accuracy in the nav system and 5 is the desired mode of accuracy in the nav system so what you will see in a minute when we enter our current position and we set it to align this 9 will count down to ultimately 0 
Once it reaches zero, it means that the system is fully aligned and you're good to go. And I thought that it, when it's below three, you will get the uh, ready light illuminated, indicating that you are actually free to go. But we're not there yet. So let's just start by entering our present position and aligning the system. So you do that by moving this knob to the pause. And you have to know exactly where you are at the airport and find the stand coordinates. Now we are at Munich, gate 203. So what I will do now is go to my maps. And in Navigraph you have these uh, parking stand coordinates. So we are 203, so that means we have to enter north 48215, east 114075. So that's the first thing we have to start doing. Uh, note that it's north and east, and that right now it's south and west. So we have to change this first. You always start with this left screen. So we have to change this from south to north, and you do that by pressing the 2 button. North. And then it was 48.21.5. So 48.21.5. Check that, 48.21.5, and insert. The next waypoint, or uh, part of the coordinate, is east, so press 6 for east, 2 north, 6 east, 8 south, 4 west. But we need east, so that's now set. And then it's 1147.5, so 1147.5, so check that, 1147.5 east, insert. Now we can start to align the system. If I now move this one to desired track system, in a minute you will see that the 9 starts to count down. Now we don't have to wait for it to count down before we can enter the other waypoints, but make sure that your initial position, that you set that using pause, and that this one is at zero, because this is the waypoint selector, and you can enter 10 coordinates in a row, uh, but be aware that Zero, the first waypoint that you um, enter, is your current position. So what we are going to do now is we will set the waypoints. And for the waypoints we have to take a look at the uh, standard instrument departure. We will be taking off runway 26 right. So we'll take off, we'll fly to Delta Mike 067, make a left turn to Delta Mike 050, then a left turn to the Munich VOR on course 143. Then another left turn towards La Col, And then a right hand turn towards Favor. So we need to enter at least these waypoints. But after Favor we fly it direct to a point called Lumus. And then it's via Delta 328 Mike, Delta 328 Echo to the Ljubljana VOR. So let's uh, take a look at the flight plan. I use Professional Flight Planner X by Aerosoft for my flight planning and that gives me a list of all sorts of uh, co uh, waypoints. So like I s what we saw on the uh, SID chart, the first waypoint 067, then 050, Munich VOR, Lacol, Favor. So at least we need to put in these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 waypoints. Then it is direct to Lumus, so I'm not gonna enter boundary, top of climb, another boundary, top of descent, it's just nonsense. I'm not gonna put that into the SIFA. But I do want to put in Lumus, that will be my sixth waypoint. And from then onwards it is down to the Ljubljana VOR, via these two. So this will be six, seven, eight, nine. Should be alright. So let's start by putting in waypoint number one, DM067, and that will be on coordinate north 48215, east 114286. So waypoint one, make sure this is at waypoint, is north 48215, 48215, verify that, insert, and east. 11.42.6 6. 
check that. 1142.6 east. Insert. That's waypoint 1. Waypoint 2 will be this one. North 48.17.3. So north 48.17.3. 48.73 is checked. Insert. And east 11.42.5. So east 11.42.5 is checked. Insert. Next waypoint will be the Munich VOR. North 48.10.8. So north 48.10.8. 10 8 48 10 8 insert and east 11 49 0 11 49 0 it's checked insert next waypoint waypoint number 4 will be Laco north 48 0 4 3 48043 is verified and correct, so insert and then it will be east uh, 0 or 12009. So 12009 insert next waypoint number 5 will be favor. North 47.56.1 So North uh, What did we say? 47.56.1 47.56.1 one. It's verified cross-checked and then it's East 12.09.3 So insert East 12093 cross checked and insert it. Waypoint number six that will be Lumus or this one. That's north forty six thirty five four. So north forty six thirty five four. Four six three five four is verified and inserted east 14094 14094 east inserts waypoint 7 will be delta 328 mike which is north 46258 so north 46258 inserts by east uh, 14169 so East fourteen sixteen nine inserts waypoint number eight will be Delta three two eight Echo North forty six eighteen seven North forty six eighteen seven Insert by East fourteen twenty two three fourteen twenty two three insert and the final waypoint number nine will be the Ljubljana VOR and the reason why I put Ljubljana VOR as my final waypoint and not the airport is that for the instrument uh, standard arrival route we have to fly from Ljubljana VOR to uh, Dolsko VOR. Then do 180 degree turn and fly into the uh, runway. So after Ljubljana, I will switch from GPS or from the uh, SIFA to the NAV mode. We'll fly the VOR, DOLAS, and then on heading, and then intercept the ILS. So Ljubljana VOR will be the final waypoint at north 46143. 46143. Insert by east. 14257 1527 east insert so that's now set 
after we've done all that we see that the current uh, nav accuracy is 5 and we have to wait for this to count down then we have to select this to nav and then we can be on our way so what I can do in the meantime is set up the pushback ground to carpet plan acknowledged call me through the menu when you're ready and we can close the doors already they are already closed, that's always nice now you see it counts down and it takes a while for it to count down to zero but um, the time it takes to count down is dependent on your position on the globe uh, on the equator the uh, alignment will be the fastest, or the sh alignment time will be the shortest. And the further away from the equator you go, the longer it will take the uh, unit to align itself. We should go into 3 any second now. There we are. So basically with three on the display you can already uh, be on your way. I'll just wait a little bit longer for it to uh, count down to actually zero. Because what we can do right now is start up the APU. And that will have the uh, APU going. And here we are. So let's set the APU to the buses. Open the APU bleed. Open the isolation valve. Switch on the other fuel pumps and we can disconnect the ground power units. Uh, the doors closed we can uh, actually call the uh, pushback tuck I'll use the better pushback plugin for my pushbacks really love that one freeware can Ground be downloaded driving up. from the uh, forums over at xplane.org now what we can see right now is that it's now on uh, one which is actually quite accurate so I'll move this switch from align to nav now what you can see here uh, this is distance versus time so we are now three miles away from the first waypoint and it will take indefinite to uh, reach it because we are now standing still as soon as the airplane gains speed you will see that this okay all doors and hatches are closed ready to connect set parking brake brakes are set clear to connect let's uh, get rid of the uh, air bridge and set the anti-collision line on and adapter in position release parking brake when you're ready to start pushback in a minute, thank you. Um, 
so what I was saying, oh, as soon as we are started moving, the computer will calculate how much time it will take with the current speed to reach the next waypoint. This is the distance in miles, this is the time it will take to uh, reach it. This is information concerning the wind, desired track uh, versus the status. So the desired track is 269 to reach the waypoint. As soon as we are at the start of the runway, it will probably be 261. I uh, like to have the distance and time on the display here throughout the flight. So as soon as the uh, alignment is complete, don't forget to switch this to nav. And basically we are good to go now. We have the isolation valve open, APU bleed is on, packs are off. Yep, we're good to go. So let's take a quick look from the outside. There's no traffic behind us. There is. Let's just wait for this one uh, to start moving and then we can start our pushback. He's starting his engines. And he is now moving, so let's release park and break, clear the push. Let's pressurize the cabin. Starting pushback, and you may start the engines. Roger, starting sequence first two, then one. So here we go. Let's start up engine number two. Twenty percent fuel flow is opened. the sound set with this airplane the uh, screaming of that old engines it's just amazing anyway starter is cut out engine number two is stabilized so start up engine number one Fuel flow opens. Engine number one is stabilized, starter is cut out, so let's switch the engine generators onto the buses. Set the Pito static heat on. Operation complete. Please set parking brake. Packs on. Isolation valve. Auto. APU bleed is off. Brakes are set. Clear to disconnect. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. Okay, let's switch off the APU. Kelly power is on, yaw damper is on. Let's perform a. Uh, let's check the uh, meter. 
Echo. Delta. Delta. Mike. Airport information. Romeo. One. Zero. Two. Zero. Zulu. Weather. Wind. Two. Four. Seven. At. Two. One. Visibility. One. Zero. Thousand. Sky condition. Few clouds. At. Three. Thousand. Eight hundred. Temperature. One. Two. Two point two. QNH. One. Zero. One. Six. Advise on initial contact. You have information. Romeo. Echo. Oh, Delta. Delta. And bypass pin has been removed. And signal on the left. I'll see you next time. Have safe flight. Thanks for your help. See you next time. Bye bye. So the Q1H 1016. By the way, I'm using uh, Active Sky XP for the weather. And if you have Active Sky XP installed, if you set your communication radio to uh, 122.0, you will get an uh, ATIS uh, for the airport that you're currently at. So what I just heard was the uh, Q1H was 1016. And there's the clear signal. Uh, and that the wind is 240 at 21. That means that we have quite a strong wind coming. Uh, we'll, we will be taking off runway 26 right. So we have a crosswind from the left, 21 knots. That's quite significant, something to really take into uh, consideration uh, during the takeoff. But first, let's do the flight control check. Full left, full right, neutral, down, up, neutral, and the rudder. Full left, full right, neutral, set flaps 5 for takeoff, and let's see what the aileron trim has to be. Uh, 3.4, something like that, and we need 97.4 percent and one on the takeoff roll so the taxi light is on parking brake is off let's be on our way to runway 26 right I'll just leave the taxi in here because we can enjoy uh, some of the excellent scenery by short final designs so really really love this uh, scenery from Munich Airport I really, really hope that short final will make a uh, scenery for Amsterdam at the same uh, level of quality as he did for Munich. That would be an awesome replacement for the uh, old Aerosoft Amsterdam that I have installed right now. Or fly Tampa for Amsterdam, doesn't really matter, as long as we get a very, very nice replacement for what we have right now, which is basically outdated X-Plane 10 scenery in Amsterdam. But anyway, we're in Munich and we are here to fully enjoy this magnificent scenery. Really love how they did those uh, bridges with the taxiways. So let's turn right here. Set the uh, transponder to TARA. Now, once you have the uh, SIVA installed and you have set the um, your waypoint and you set it to NAV, if you want to use it, you have to set this switch to GPS. And then you have to set your... Uh, What's called flight director to a VOR lock. And then you have the airplane follow the waypoints that you have entered into the SIVA. There's an airplane on final there. Taxi speed is way too high, but uh, on a straight uh, piece of taxiway I don't really care too much. We have to speed things up a little bit, otherwise it gets too boring. By the way, the AI traffic that you're looking at is uh, X-Live Deluxe. 
I can use it also for air traffic control, but I'm not going to do that in this flight. It's not the main purpose. The main purpose is the uh, to show you the CIFA for navigation. But what I really like is that since the first uh, start of X-Plane uh, 11, that you really see a lot of new people coming into the X-Plane community embracing this platform. Also developers are doing that. And that you actually you really see over the past few years how this platform grew, how it matured and what we have right now. Although it's certainly not perfect. I mean, uh, if you look at, for instance, the AI traffic, even with X-Life Deluxe, it's still not, uh, not even the standard of the basic uh, air traffic control in Flight Simulator X, for instance. So there's definitely room for improvement, but if you, s if you just look at the amount of progress that has been made with this platform over the last couple of years, it's immense. We went from uh, very basic sceneries, airports without 3D buildings to a huge amount of airplanes or uh, airports that have now um, 3D objects on them and with the uh, payware developers uh, stepping into this platform we have some awesome scenery with uh, this being the latest and one of th the very best right now. Short finals designs Munich, absolutely to be recommended, beautiful scenery. So let's line up on the runway. And this really gives hope for the future of this uh, platform. Now, by the way, the initial climb clearance out of Munich is 7,000 feet. So let's put that on there. That airplane has vacated the runway. Can't see any other uh, landing lights approaching. So let's just uh, line up. Approaching two, six, right. So 97.4% and one on takeoff power. On runway, two, six, right. Check two, six, right is correct, verified. And here we are lined up on the runway. Let's say we are cleared for takeoff. So landing lights on, strobe lights are on, anti-collision lights are on. Cabin crew, take your seats for takeoff. And the cabin is pressurized, specs are on, we are good to go. So let's just do that, here we go. Two stable engines and here we go. We have to be wary of that uh, 21 uh, knot crosswind coming in from the left. 80 knots. Cross checked. Rotate. Here we go, rotating and oh, stall. Positive rate gear up. Now the maximum speed on the initial part of the lag of the uh, departure is 210 knots. So let's switch on the autopilot already, set it to indicated airspeed holds, gear is up and off. Now the speed is increasing, flaps 2, and here we go, left turn. Towards the DM050. Flaps one. So 
So we are on GPS, indicated airspeed holds. Autopilot is engaged. We are now flying from waypoint 1 to waypoint 2. Three miles less than a minute. And as soon as we pass waypoint 2 and we are flying towards waypoint 3, the maximum speed on that leg will be 250 knots. So that's when we have to start accelerating. So let's ease back on the thrust. Take of thrust is now not necessary anymore. So about 90% and one for climb. One mile out of the next waypoint. Here we go from waypoint two to waypoint three. Let's put 250 as the maximum speed in here. Altimeter setting. And we can also set Q&H standard 1013. The uh, transition altitude in this airport is 5,000 feet. Here we go. Flaps up. So flaps up, no lights, gear is up and off. Let's say we are clear to climb flight level 270. Runway turn of lights can be switched off. The outside air temperature is still above 10 degrees, so we don't need anti ice just yet. Here we are well above the clouds, there's still some visible moisture, the temperature is now below 10, so let's switch on the engine anti-ice just in case. We are climbing through 9500, flying from waypoint 3 to waypoint 4. We are passing 10,000 feet, landing lights off, seatbelt signs auto, and increase the speed to 280 to continue the climb. Continuing on our climb to fly level 270. Now, what is important uh, in this flight is that the um, top of descent will be 89 miles out of uh, Ljubljana and it will be uh, 89 minus 33 is 56 miles prior to Lumus. So right now we are flying towards, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, we're now flying towards La Col, Fa Favor is five, and then Lumus is six, so 56 miles prior to waypoint six is when we have to start our descent. I'm not really sure whether this is because of turbulence or the uh, step trim is uh, going berserk. But the airplane is uh, moving up and down a little bit too much uh, for my liking. Don't know why that is. But this is too regular to be turbulent, so I think it's something with the step trim. I don't get any 
error messages whatsoever. Let's just see how it goes. We're flying over southern Germany, heading for the uh, Austrian border. With the Alps. And like I said, the weather is Active Sky XP. I use the uh, default X-Plane clouds. The only extra set that is installed is the high-res uh, texture set from Active Sky XP. Uh, so if you use Active Sky, you install the uh, high-res texture set, and you leave everything else uh, with X-Plane itself. This is the uh, type of clouds that you are looking at. It's definitely not the best looking clouds uh, in, in the flight sim world, but uh, I think it's not bad. And I really like how uh, Active Sky puts in the different layers of clouds. I'm actually quite satisfied, and the performance is very nice with uh, when you use textures uh, like this. That was the reason for me to get rid of SkyMax. There was uh, a huge impact on the frames. Uh, and also there was an issue with the memory usage of uh, SkyMax, so that if you were making longer flights, uh, it wouldn't empty the uh, memory cache, uh, causing the sim to uh, have serious drops in performance. And then you have to change the uh, cloud draw distance every now and then to uh, basically empty the memory cache and have the performance back up to normal. It's been an issue that was addressed before, it is known by the developers, but they never did anything about it. That, to me, that was the reason to uh, drop SkyMix. So right now, with uh, Active Sky and the uh, X-Plane textures, I'm uh, actually quite happy. S certainly, as far as it concerns performance, and uh, I'll just happily await uh, Rex to uh, come aboard in uh, X-Plane while we start to overfly the Alps here. Some truly amazing landscapes and sceneries uh, down here. Photo scenery tiles by zonephoto.xplane.fr Might one day make my own Ortho 4XP tiles with a higher uh, resolution mesh for this part of the world. But so far I think these uh, images look quite nice. don't understand why that uh, step trim is uh, moving like this. can't imagine that it's supposed to be like this, so uh, might be something for FlyJSim to look into. Could be an 11.3 uh, uh, thing, not really sure. But as far as I know, I updated everything. Passing 20,000 feet. There's still some clouds uh, on our on our way, so I leave the anti eyes on for now. And while the airplane uh, continues its flight, let's just uh, enjoy some of the fabulous scenery down here. I really love flying over this part of the uh, of the planet. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, I really, really love the F-Mod sound in, uh, for this uh, airplane. With the beautiful sound of the old uh, engines. But you don't have to stand too close because it will uh, make your uh, eardrums uh, bleed. But uh, other than that, it's absolutely amazing.
lovely, lovely scenery down here. But anyway, uh, Loomis was waypoint 6, so this is waypoint 7, 8. Ljubljana is waypoint 9. Uh, what I will do is... Uh, let's pick up some charge for Ljubljana. Because this will be our rifle. And from Lumus, basically what you do is you fly a 148 radial into the Ljubljana VOR. And you have to take good uh, care on your altitude because you will be flying over Alpine Alps and that's not clearly displayed on this chart but you have to be at least fly level 130 until you are 13 miles out of Ljubljana then you have to descend to 10,500 feet until you are 5 miles Ljubljana then you can descend to 7,000 feet and from there on you fly towards the Dolsko VOR and you have to be at 4000 feet to intercept the uh, ILS. So we have to take good care of that. Now the Ljubljana VOR is 117.2. So what I'll just do is set 117.2 in the NAV2 radio. That will give us a reading as soon as we are in range. I think we're just gonna... We might not even hit fly level 270 because we are climbing actually quite slow. Let's just put in full thrust now. See if we can accelerate that climb a little bit. Because when this is at 56 we already have to start our descent. That's only 9 miles to go. And we still have 2,000 feet to go, so we're not going to make that because we're doing approximately 8 miles per minute. And that means we should be at 26,500 feet, so what we'll just do... And we'll probably get a warning message from the uh, pressurization system if we uh, start to descend already so let's just switch off the NTIs for now I'll just uh, pop this one over to 26,000 do the same thing over here 26 means 3,900. There we are. And then we can descend to 13,000 feet. Right now. So, indicated airspeed holds. Close the throttles. Passengers back in their seats. And here we start our descent now. So we are now uh, in range of the uh, Ljubljana VOR. We are now 77 miles out. And like I mentioned, we have to take good care. We have to fly 130 uh, until we reach 13 mile out of the Ljubljana VOR. And only after we pass 13 miles we can continue our descent to 10,500. So we have to really have to watch that uh, very closely.
on that out of control trim is actually quite annoying in terms of the noise it produces. It's too bad because other than that this is a magnificent add-on. It's one of my favorites in, in X-Plane. Combined with of course the SIBO uh, mod, the Flight Factor A320, the Fly J Sim 727, the IXX 737. The uh, leading edge simulation Saab 340 is also one of my favorites. I haven't tried the Coronado one. From what I saw on uh, videos on YouTube uh, of the Coronado uh, Saab 340, I think my first impression is that it's mainly more eye candy. But that uh, in terms of systems, it's not much more or less complicated than the leading edge uh, simulation Saab. And I'm actually quite satisfied with the leading edge uh, simulation. So. Uh, don't really want to spend another 40 euros on another plane that I basically already have. So I think that's why I'm. For now, I won't buy the uh, Coronado one. Maybe sometimes in the nice sale, but uh, not just yet. And there's plenty of other airplanes in the virtual hangar to enjoy, so. Uh No reason to be bored anytime soon. Now I also want the, uh, apart from the Ljubljana VOR, I want to set the Dolsko VOR 112.7. That will be my number one radio in here, and that's the ILS, so let me just pop this one over. And 110.5 is the ILS for the Ljubljana runway 30 with a course of 303. We're still uh, inbound. Waypoint number six being Lumus. Should take us uh, four and a half minutes to uh, reach that one. So we will be at flight level 130. Uh, a lot sooner than. Uh, we are at 13 miles out, so let's just see if I can change this rate of descent to vertical speeds. But it doesn't look like that's included in this old autopilot system, so we'll just have to uh, do this. What I can do is apply a little bit of thrust to uh, decrease the rate of descent. If we descend at uh, 1,000 feet per minute, that will be plenty. There we are. Something like this. And the reason for that is we have this other ridge of Alps down there. And we have to cross that before we can uh, continue our descent. So that's probably that 13 mile uh, away from uh, the Ljubljana VOR uh, position. Anyway, Ljubljana coming up down there. Let's see Q&H down there is 1018. Wind is light and variable. Sky is clear. Visibility more than 10. So that's actually quite uh, nice flying conditions down there. 1018 is important to remember. 
and the transition altitude into Ljubljana will be 10,500 feet. So as soon as we are within 13 miles uh, range of the Ljubljana VOR, we have to descend to 10,500 feet. We can immediately set the uh, Q1H of 1018. For now, we just have to be a little more patient. 23 miles to go. So that's approximately three minutes, or well, 1.9er. Oh no, that's the uh, waypoint uh, of Lu Lumus. That's not the 13-mile uh, uh, mark for the Ljubljana VOR. Two different things. Here we go, 30 mile coming up, increase the thrust, reduce the rate of descent to approximately 500 feet per minute. I think this uh, trim setting will uh, make the airline run out of sick bags quite soon. This is not what it's supposed to be like. So 13,000 feet coming up, we have to increase the thrust to maintain 280 knots we're now in the altitude hold mode so really have to uh, take some uh, pay some attention to the uh, airspeed it's now dropping slightly want to be at 280 knots for another 10 miles, then we can uh, start to descend towards uh, 10,500 feet. Like I said, set Q and H 1018. Well, I think 274 is a nice speed. I'm not going to bother those last six uh, knots. But the weather report was quite accurate. The sky is clear. Just have a look at these beautiful, beautiful mountains here. At the border between uh, Austria and uh, Slovenia. And uh, in this valley is where the airport is located. It should be somewhere over there. Yeah, there it is. That's the airport. 16 miles out. Some of the final riches of the Alps. Awesome scenery here. 14 miles out, 13 miles. So let's set the altitude to 10,500 feet. Close the throttles. Set this one to indicated airspeed hold. And set the Q&H 1018. Now we also have to uh, take um, a look at the approach plates for the decision heights. Category 1, that's what we have today. 200 feet minimums radio, so let's switch this one to 200. And also on the first officer side. There we are. 
Uh, Ljubljana VOR at 8 miles. Let's set the heading buck. And once we pass 5 mile Ljubljana we can descend 7000 feet. Which happens to be right now, so 7000 feet. And we can decrease the speed to 240 knots. Now the course that we need to fly from Ljubljana to Dolsko is 119er. So let's dial the course to 119. No, set this one to heading selects. Switch this one over to nav. It is set course 119er. And switch this over to VOR lock. That will have the airplane uh, intercept the uh, local the uh, 119 radial towards uh, what was it called Dolsko VOR. And we are now good to descend further 240. Let's switch the landing lights on. Runway turn off lights also for all that matters. No need for anti-ice. Temperature is already 10 degrees Celsius, so we can leave that off. There's the airport. Single runway. We come into this way, try to uh, make this exit, and then taxi to one of the gates there. Airport sceneries, by the way, freeware is a download from the forums over at xplane.org. I just don't know who uh, developed it right now, but I will look that up and I will put the uh, download link in the description of the video. So let's continue our descent to 4000 feet. We have no obstacles in the terrain right now. So I already switched NAV radio 2 to the ILS frequency of 1105, so this is now the uh, distance we have to fly on the uh, ILS. It will just fly towards the, uh, what was it called, Dolsko VOR. Make the turn there and then uh, we'll fly uh, our final approach leg. Passing 7,000 feet, set the uh, auto brakes to medium. Arm the spoilers. Don't really care that we are about uh, 15 miles out of the uh, ILS when we have to make the turn because we also have to get rid of some speed. And it's always... Uh, quite handy to do that in a turn I think. Now, as you can see here the VOR is slightly to the left of the runway judging by the looks of it. So I'm just gonna make a right hand turn onto the uh, approach course that will be 303 if I'm not mistaken. Yes it is.
So let's set the heading to the right already. One thousand feet to go. Let's set this one to heading. Make that right hand turn now. We can switch to 1105, set the course to 303. And make that heading 330 to intercept the uh, localizer. So 4,000 feet coming up, let's set the speed back to 180, leave the uh, throttles closed to slow down. And we have to start... Uh, looking at our flap settings. So let's set flaps 1. What will be our landing speed today? Flaps 30, Fear Rev 133. It's all fine by me. And let's set flaps 5 for 180. Start to increase a little bit of power because we are now uh, losing speed quite rapidly. go 180 knots and let's set this one to auto approach that left the airplane establish itself on the localizer bit more power but still losing a little bit of speed Thirteen miles out on the ILS, or on the uh, localizer, I mean. Uh, missed approach altitude will be, I think, it's six thousand feet in here. Yeah, six thousand feet for the missed approach altitudes. Localizer is alive. Localizer capture, set to missed approach, heading 303. So let's set the speed back to 133. And let's ease back a little bit on the throttle, start to slowly decelerate. Runway is in sight, it's down there. Okay, set flaps 10. Glide slope is alive. Nine miles out. Flaps 15. That will cause a little bit of drag. So we now have to Start applying a bit more thrusts, a little bit less. Seven miles out, gear down. Reduce power, flaps 25. Flaps 30, and reduce the speed to 133. 
glide slope is captured, so let's set the missed approach altitude 6,000 feet and run the landing checks. Landing gear is down, locked, 3 green, flaps 30 green, auto brakes, medium, spoilers armed, missed approach heading and altitude set, exterior lights on. Cabin crew, take your seats for landing. Cabin is ready. Oh, power, 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 power. We need speeds. And let's uh, disconnect the autopilot and go for a manual uh, landing. Outer marker. Drifting slightly to the left, correcting. A little bit slow, but the speed is increasing slightly, so that's being corrected already. Slightly low. Check 1000 feet stabilized. Missed approach altitude set. Increase a little bit of. We need to increase the speed a little bit more. Approaching 30. That's slow. 30 is verified and correct. We're drifting left, so correcting to the right. Glide slope still all right ish. Check 500 feet. We are high. Continue landing. I always bounce with this airplane, don't know what it is. Reverse is normal. Manual braking, reverse is idle, not the best of landings, auto brakes off, landing lights off, the uh, Pito heats are off, vacating the runway, runway turn of lights off, strobe light is off, let's Turn on the APU. We'll take a look at that landing in the outside uh, in a minute. Since we are progressing so nicely over the taxiway, let's just proceed to gate number four, which will be down there. Clean up the airplane, retract flaps, and slats. Oh. So gate number four, we are already there. Taxi light is off. Let's set the uh, APU to the generator. Open the APU bleeds and the let's just park first.
And here we are. So, parking brake set. Now let's take a look at that landing from the outside perspective first. Not the best of uh, touchdowns I've ever had, but uh, the rollout seemed to be quite nice on the center line. Let's see where that touchdown was. We were late on the touchdown. off-center line A little bit of aerodynamic braking. So anyway, let's cut down the engines, connect the ground power units, your damper is off, galley power remains on, the window heats can be switched off, set the uh, pressurization to ground. Isolation valve opens, seatbelt signs off, anti-collision lights off. Ground power to the buses, APU can be switched off and the fuel pumps off as well. So that concludes the flight uh, with the 737-200 to Ljubljana, with a name that I cannot pronounce. Um, like I said, freeware scenery for the airport, downloaded from the forums at uh, explain.org. I uh, will look up the uh, link and provide that in the description of this video. Hope you liked the video. If you have any tips, tricks, comments, questions whatsoever, please leave them in the comment section below. As usual, please do so in a respectful manner. And I hope to see you all again on another day in another video. Thank you for watching. And bye-bye.